Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, March 15th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, it's Patch Tuesday, so sorry, lots of patches in today's uh, podcast, starting, of course, with uh, Microsoft, according to Renato's count, who, as usual, created the diary today for us. We got 76 vulnerabilities patched, nine of them are critical, and two are already being exploited. One of uh, the exploited vulnerabilities, it's a vulnerability in Microsoft Outlook, has actually been exploited for about a year since April last year in highly targeted attacks, in particular against some Eastern European uh, governments. Uh, Russia supposedly was behind these attacks, and it does actually use a relatively old style vulnerability. It's against Microsoft Outlook. And the trick here is that you can get Microsoft Outlook to connect to an SMB share. We have had this in many other contexts where a link pointing to an SMB share would result in the system automatically reaching out to that SMB share. And with that, of course, passing credentials, which could be downgraded to NTLM hashes, which then of course can easily be used in an NTLM relay attack. So if you have outbound port 445 uh, blocked, you're actually safe here, at least against uh, the attack leaking credentials to the outside. This attack and the credentials were then often used to exfiltrate emails. But Exploitation, now that the vulnerability is known, is really relatively straightforward, just requires the right URL in the right MAPI property, and you're pretty much all set there. CVSS for this is 9.8. The second vulnerability is also sort of in a feature that has had issues before. Windows Smart Screen, that's the entire mark of the web business, where if you download a file from uh, the internet, it has this mark of the web attached. So when you're opening it, it will then uh, bypass it. The problem here was that this mark of the web was uh, not interpreted right if the signature of the file was off. And uh, that has been fixed before, but not completely. So this is yet another fix for this vulnerability. They actually assign it a new CVE number, CVE 2023-2488. So these are the two uh, already exploited vulnerabilities. There is one other vulnerability that uh, I think uh, Renato here uh, rightfully points out as something uh, to watch out for. And this is a remote code execution vulnerability in the HTTP protocol stack. So basically the web server that comes uh, with uh, Windows Server. Good part here is it only affects the most recent versions of Windows Server 2022. You also have to have HTTP 3 enabled, so HTTP over UDP, and you have to use buffered I.O. Only if all of this is through and HTTP 3 is only supported in Windows Server 2022, then you are vulnerable, but it does require no privileges, uh, attack complexity is low according to Microsoft, and the CVSS here is 9.8 as it does provide a remote code execution. So there's certainly uh, one to watch and, well, uh, disabling HP3 may be sort of a quick fix here, but uh, just uh, get it patched and uh, get it over with. The server itself has to run HTTP 3. So this is not a problem if you have a proxy like Cloudflare or something like this, terminating HTTP 3 and then your web server just repeat receiving HTTP 2 or even HTTP 1.1 traffic. So then you would be good. The Windows Server 2022 HTTP stack has to support HTTP 3 for you to be vulnerable. So these are uh, the Microsoft vulnerabilities. I would rate today sort of as average. I don't really think uh, those uh, two already exploited ones are sort of, you know, uh, super burning hot vulnerabilities, but definitely something that you need today to take care of. And well, of course, we also got updates from Adobe again. Adobe actually fixed 106 different vulnerabilities today. A number of different uh, products. I do want to point out uh, one particular vulnerability, CVE 2023 
26360. This one is already exploited in the wild and it affects Adobe Cold Fusion. No details here about uh, what exactly is affected, just that it's already being exploited. There are also vulnerabilities being patched in Magento, that's the e-commerce platform. Lots of stuff in Experience Manager. I think if I counted correctly, it was like 17 or 18 different vulnerabilities, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Dimension sort of has the most vulnerabilities being addressed here. Somewhere between 50 or 60. It was hard to count them all, but the that's uh, for Adobe, so watch out for uh, the Cold Fusion vulnerability. That's the must-patch one. And I would also say uh, the Magento ones. Uh, we had a lot of bad history here uh, with attackers going after unpatched Magento servers in the past. And in miscellaneous patches, we got uh, patches from SAP. It looks like they're patching 19 vulnerabilities across their products and also an update for Firefox. Uh, Firefox 111 also patches 13 vulnerabilities. That's it for today. So thanks for listening and well, uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.